It was March 2007, and my wife Claire and I had endured what seemed like an excruciating, unnecessarily long period of diagnostic frustration, awaiting some answers, any answers, to what was plaguing her. Brief lapses in memory, losing her keys, but shoot, I'd done that myself more than once, misinterpreting others' actions and reactions, mild disorganizations such as leaving bedroom and bathroom lights on, I did that too, and trying to bake a pizza in the microwave. But all of this was way out of character for the highly organized woman I had known and loved for more than twelve years. Now the results of her visit to the neuropsychologist had been relayed to her neurologist, and we sat waiting for him to pass on the news. It's TIAs, isn't it? The anxious physician within me asked hopefully. TIA stands for transient ischemic attack, which is a small, often temporary stroke. The neurologist shook his head slowly but surely. Then he quietly explained that my wife had Alzheimer's disease, or, as he diplomatically shortened it, A.D. Before we left his office, he wrote her a prescription for memantine, one of the four or five medications that help slow, though not stop, the progress of this relentlessly cruel and pitiless memory killer. As we drove back to our home on Vancouver's North Shore, my wife began crying quietly. Do you want to share? I asked at a stoplight. Well, you've been through this before, she observed, referring to the cancer death of my wife Betsy. Well, you have too, honey, I said, a reminder that she had lost her first husband to pancreatic cancer. We were mostly quiet as we drove the rest of the way home, our private probably overlapping thoughts, fears, and fantasies swirling in our respective heads. Claire was suffering from early-onset Alzheimer's disease. It had first been symptomatic five years earlier when she was only 62, an age at which very few in the general population are so unfairly stricken. A gifted clinical psychologist, she had been in steady demand in those days to give workshops to counselors and psychologists working in the field, professionals who wanted to take further instruction from someone with such an outstanding and deserved international reputation. But there had been little incidents that indicated all was not right with her. Missed appointments, confusion over a passport renewal, misinterpretations of family and colleagues' actions. On February 21st, 2002, she had written in her journal, So much is happening that I can't keep issues straight. Every one of these hiccups seems to take the stuffing out of me, and I am so tired. We took grandson William for the weekend. He kept us busy, and David seemed annoyed, irritated that he was there. I was picking up black vibes from David, which was not helping because, amongst other things, as he saw it, no sex, but he was creating an unpleasant aura. Everything seems to be compounded by my forgetfulness. E.g., I asked Mary to pick up the signed passport application at Jay's clinic, and she did so. At least she went there, but I had not yet taken it there. I try to stay, be organized, but I have never felt so disorganized. Passport papers, insurance papers. This leads to much pain worrying if dementia is setting in. I need more time. After presenting a week-long workshop in London in July 2004, Claire emailed me, adding a very pleased note that her hostess was thrilled with the card holder in pewter and pearl that I gave her. Actually, I forgot to give it to her when I arrived and found it in my suitcase when I packed this morning. It was an innocent postscript, but it was a reminder that in a somewhat synchronous fashion we had both been pushing our respective fears and anxieties about her health into the background and continuing to love, appreciate, and fully enjoy each other. Then, 
In late spring 2006, Claire returned to the United Kingdom to...